its voice. I'm sorry, the sound was probably super bad right there. I'm sorry for that, I just realized the bot went into, uh, into the muted voice uh, thingy, so hey, sorry for that. Welcome back, so here we go. I was like, why the audio is in the red? It's peaking red right now, but that's why, because it's boosting. All right, so uh, we're back uh, this afternoon for doing something i guess uh, i think this afternoon basically it's gonna be a lot of uh, prep because i realized uh while looking into our trusty book something i should have read a bit earlier hey <laughs> uh, you see me coming with that one but uh basically i realized we are missing a product that we were we will need to finish cleaning up most of the surface here so uh that's gonna be something uh that i will have to go buy tonight uh Luckily, it's something available pretty much everywhere. Any uh, hardware shop uh, has those. It's uh, like basically some sort of thinner for painting. Uh, it's mineral uh, spirits, it's called. I had never heard of that before, but seems like it's something pretty common. And uh, that's what we're going to use to uh, clean up pretty much everything left like the bearing surface and stuff so so far we're use we have used a lot of wd-40 the mineral spirits gonna make sure that the there's no wd-40 left in there and it's gonna it's going to allow us to uh, pretty much clean all the surfaces here dual front dual front there you go. So basically all those surfaces at the center here is uh, the thing we're gonna make sure is clean. Same thing for those those surfaces right there. And uh, that being said, since I don't have the product, well, I don't think this afternoon's going to be a long stream to be fair. However, we're gonna uh, proceed to uh, working our way through some components and prepare everything for tomorrow when I'm gonna have what it takes to clean these ups and pretty much uh, prep everything. One thing cool about what I've read in the book uh, during lunch time is that we're gonna do the procedure twice. Uh, we're cleaning up pretty much a first time now and then uh, at some point, well, after the pre-assembly procedure, we're gonna be uh, cleaning again everything to make sure everything is top notch and then we're gonna proceed to the final assembly. So uh, that being said, I will say uh, we are in a pretty, pretty good uh, moment right now. I just filled the air compressor because we're gonna uh, spray some air here and there to uh, push any debris out since everything's open at the moment. We're gonna try to push any uh, debris, any sand, any dirt that could be uh, stuck inside the engine in the oil gallery and inside uh, the water galleries too. So this way we should end up with something uh, pretty clean and ready to assemble. So first of all, uh, yeah, let's start with that. Uh, I will start basically uh, here. Let me show you quickly here. So a uh, few pictures there, but basically uh, it's the visual inspection and uh, pretty much just looking at everything on the engine stand uh, to see if everything looks great. Then uh, there is a few things. One thing I didn't notice is that uh, I could have bought a special tool to do the threads on uh, the head of the the engine for the cylinder head bolts I'm not stressed with them to be fair uh, they were in really really good shape we're gonna put some lights in it and see if everything's great but when I disassembled the engine there was nothing to be worried about over there uh, so I think we're gonna be pretty good on that but yeah so first of all we're gonna take a look over here through the oil gallery the first one being right there so if i stick my light through that here i should be able at some point to see let me check like that so i can see in here that we are doing fine uh, also on in the book they are putting a flashlight through the one that's in the corner over there so yeah that's the one i've just checked right now so that one pretty easy to see these ones uh the one here is plugged so basically if you want to understand what i'm looking at right now 
there you go and what I realized is that this one is already capped but basically here this is the oil gallery going from the front to the rear and at the rear here I have pretty much a good visual of what's going on in there so this is oil oil is coming through here so uh this is a place where the oil is getting in and here's the side where it's getting back down so uh one thing you have to know is that when the oil pan is going to be in here uh here is where the oil filter is going so i'm pretty sure that Actually, it's not even plugged in between. Oh yeah, that's true. Here is a stick going inside there and that's gonna be allowing the oil to go from one side then push back to the other and there's a plug going and blocking the middle part there, I think. So it's a plastic plug going in the in between and this is this will uh, probably do uh, how would I say that? That's probably where basically the oil is getting picked up by the oil pump at the front. Then it's getting pushed with pressure through here. It's moving up through the filter. Then it's going down through here and going around the engine to the other side. So that's pretty much how it's working from what I understand from it. So that's what we're gonna take a look at and make sure that nothing is wrong with it. So looking here, here minimal rust in there, or more residue from uh, the oil. We're gonna brush that for sure. And we are bolting through these. And basically the oil gallery is going from here and then it's moving down to the middle here. So when looking at this here, dual side. Let's make it bigger. So it's moving from the front here. You see the plug right there. So this is a cylinder moving all the way from front to back of the engine. And then it's moving through those metal here. That metal here has oil gallery uh, coming right in here. And you see how this is done. This is allowing the oil to cover uh, the bearing surface at the back. And in the bearings, uh, there's some small uh, holes allowing a bit of uh, oil to go in between uh, the crankshaft bearing surface and that side here. So this is super important. Uh, this is pretty much what keeps your engine alive. So that's why we're gonna have to uh, make sure that everything here is in really, really good condition. So we're gonna be scrubbing that a lot, probably tomorrow when we receive uh, the brush or in two days so honestly tomorrow i don't know if we're gonna be able to uh, go forward that much if we don't receive those brush uh, we're waiting for cool so yeah so basically right now that will be the part where i would be uh using like some brush to go through uh, some of the oil gallery and stuff in here. So uh, for now we cannot really do that, but that's part of the game sadly. Just trying to remove any schmutz from uh, that. That's gonna be part of the game for now. Uh, otherwise, they are brushing that, that, and then they are brushing everything on top of the engine. So uh, we're gonna move it around and see if there's anything I can see from top side of it. There we go. So let's visually inspect that too. So here I have a bit of particles. It's gonna be worth to uh, throw the brush to uh into those i can see there's debris in there so we're gonna make sure we're trying to remove as much debris as possible here i have the plug for the cooling there's a bit of rust at the bottom there the, in the uh, water passage which is pretty normal to be fair it's a classic with those I mean, it's still water that is moving through that, so it makes sense that this is happening. All right, we're gonna use the air compressor and start to blow through that. 
Just going to make sure that we don't have anything left in here. That's crazy, man. There's casting material here and there. Like here, I can really see a big chunk. Hmm. That one could be worth removing, to be fair. It's crazy. Is it the same thing there? No, this side is smooth and that side is horrible, which is crazy. So that here, it might be worth uh, throwing a bit of uh, a brush in there. Here, that's not too bad. Going somewhere is gonna help. And yep, bit of frost in there, but hey, part of the game. I don't know if there's a product actually you can put into uh, the cooling system to uh, release part of that and then flush everything. There is probably something, but it's probably hard because yeah, there's a bit of frost at the bottom there. I think we're gonna have to live with that one. Yep, the casting material, that's pissing me off quite a bit there. It's really not great. I think I'm gonna try to remove some to be fair because it's, it's sure it's not helping anything and more than that, it can uh, like screw the flow a little bit because basically you're getting pressure from there moving through the engine so it's either coming in or out i don't know on which side it's pressurized and on which side it is uh, the output but basically no matter what it is that's probably the output because the thermostat is on this side but basically that means uh the flow could be disturbed and less smooth going through that can i reach it and i can reach it uh, i'm unsure of doing it or not man it's not even difficult to remove yeah screw that i'm sending that all right let me grab that and try it like so because I don't want these chunk of metal one day to detach because of corrosion and then uh, moving to the bottom of the engine uh, actually. There you go. That's already looking better. I'm gonna try to clean everything up. Since it's cast iron, I should be able to just use a magnet now that I think of it. Look at these. I've just removed those from the side of the engine block without even having to force on them. That's crazy, right? I think that's actually a really good call. If I could reach the bottom a little bit more, there's even some more left in there, but I don't think that's gonna be possible. One thing we can also do this afternoon is prepare uh, the tools by cleaning them, it will be a good idea because uh, we need to clean all the tools we're gonna use because we wanna make sure we're not going to uh, have some uh, contamination. Like if uh, you have some old residue on uh, your, your sockets or your ratchet or anything, it could cause a contamination of the bearing surface, which mean damage and uh, Usually it's not that it's gonna blow up straight away, just that on the long term it could uh, reduce the uh, life expectan expectancy of that. So yeah.
Have you seen that? That help cleaning a bit of stuff. Sorry, it's probably not the greatest sound for you guys. I just sprayed myself right there. There was quite a bit of schmitz in there. All right. That side's pretty much done. Let's do the same thing, but on the other side. So I'm just going to, ah, I don't want to throw it on the ground. Let's just do that. So I'm going to flip it a little bit more. I want to bring that so it, the dirt can easily fall. So, oh, camera. So right now what I'm doing is pretty much uh, the oil gallery here uh, with the bolts. The bolts are uh, plugging through the oil gallery. Then I'm gonna go and do the water passage. So I've just seen a bunch of uh, debris uh, fly out. Again, and again, yo. That's just like a small layer of frost or paint or both. So basically that's why it's worth doing. I think I'm gonna flip it back to the other side because I love the way it reacts over here. So we're gonna redo a little bit of that side here, but at the bottom on the flip a little bit upside down. Yep. Yep, that's worth uh, doing. Because right now we just eliminate a bunch of things that fell out of the engine block. So this is pretty cool. Uh, honestly, worth being super careful with all these. I'm gonna try to make sure we don't have a lot of schmutz. Like I said, we're gonna be uh, passing again on those surfaces due to the fact that we need uh, mineral spirits to uh, do that part there. Let me check. 
what they are doing next. So basically the next step will be to clean all uh, the passage on the other side uh, for the crankshaft. And then we're gonna have also to uh, clean up the crankshaft. So clean other blood passage. So yeah, we're gonna have to clear, uh, to clean with mineral spirits, all the bearing surface and stuff. Like I said, uh, the air, we just done that. Cylinder wall uh, again mineral spirits because did you know that you cannot use degreaser for uh, any engine like component on uh, the inside so and it makes sense but basically that here is a no-go on the inside outside not too bad ideally only on the plastic stuff uh for the engine so plastic cover and stuff uh that's what they say is the ideal on the all the rest should be done with mineral spirits basically so uh, really good thing to do but uh yeah so keep that in mind if you're doing your own it's super important then crankshaft cleaning we're missing the brush for that uh i think it's gonna be up to uh getting some parts out to get ready for that because basically right now if i'm showing it this way this here is going back on the engine itself and uh, basically what's up with that is that we need to measure the clearance i already said that a thousand times uh, this morning so let me repeat myself all over again but basically here you have uh the crankshaft bearing surface so it's gonna match that but to measure everything we need also the cap so now i'm gonna go at the back of the garage and see uh, where I've thrown those caps actually. I probably send them to the machine shop so I know in which box they should be in, but I will have to take a look at this. So we're gonna prepare that, find also uh, the bolts for them, and uh, then we're gonna be working our way around with that. So let's go. Oh, dual front. That's gonna be the best camera. So let's go for that. Like I already said, all the boxes in here are pretty much uh, what we're gonna use uh, in the near future. So that's gonna be quite a big deal. These are the piston. So we're gonna bring them soon, but not yet. When I'm talking about uh, the gasket, these are my uh, LS7, LS9 actually, LS9 uh, gasket here. So it's a pair, so it's two set. So these are the brand new uh, performance uh, head gasket we're gonna use. So uh, you can already guess where they are going. We just saw the surface there. So these are, these have a good reputation for boost and stuff so that's why I went with those stuff have all the rockers in here that we're gonna be eventually using but and cleaning because we need all those to be super clean but that's gonna be for the head all right what do we have in here there we go we have the paint we have springs we have a bunch of stuff so that box coming with me I don't think it's gonna be in here what I'm looking for but it is actually part of what I sent to the machine shop. So there we go. I don't think you need to see uh, the price it costs to get that machine. But there we go. Clutch part. We should be okay with that. We shouldn't need that box, but I'm gonna bring it close because there might be parts in it actually. And then that box here should be the one. So again, one thing to keep in mind is that I had the engine balance with a new set of piston. They are some used uh, piston actually. I went a bit cheap on that. I'm not, it's not the proudest move of the build, but still I had a deal for uh, some uh, piston from an LSQ. LS3, LS3, which is a Gen 4 and pretty much the same thing that I use so far. So that's why. All right, so here they gave me back all the rings, but since I'm replacing them, we're not going to use that. 
here is pretty much everything for uh, this is probably for the flex plate which we are not using yet yeah, flex plate to crank so we're not using that anymore this is the paint aluminum last blast okay let's read on that because that's what we're going to use to paint our engine block so that's gonna be sick uh, for engine builders engine paint restores a fresh new aluminum appearance don't smudge mm. All right, so it doesn't say that we need to put uh, any uh, primer before that. So it should be a straight there, uh, painting that uh, straight pretty much uh, forward with all that. Uh, they say that you need to remove the rust uh, prior to anything. So we have a bit of rust left here and there. We're gonna see how it turns out. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to remove the entire thing. So therefore, uh, it might stay there for a while. This box, we don't need that anymore. Uh, everything in there is almost good for the trash, to be fair. Here, let me just remove that or actually that should be okay all right so here we have uh, the flywheel so the flywheel was a little bit damaged actually not damaged but just a few spot of rust which is not ideal but we we should be able to uh, fix that what do we have left in here pretty much nothing so these are all right so these are the new bolts uh, to torque the the flywheel so that's cool uh, this is for the dual clutch so I won't need that just yet so that being said I'm still looking for uh, some of the parts let me check in here here we have the rest of the clutch that's not a box I sent to them so actually that one can stay in here oh the clutch is so beautiful oh, no, no. I'm gonna have to clean up the surface there, but pretty much everything is good looking. Really happy with that. Uh, that's tubing. So I'm gonna bring the actual piston box because I think it might be in here. I Yeah, I'll probably send that, right? To have everything measured with it. Uh, it's hard to reach. There you go. These boxes are heavy, man. Engine components is not something light. All right. What do we have in here? So there we go. These are the piston that are going to be in there. The only thing I will have to say is that some of the empty friction uh, sides are uh, a bit like removed, like there was a, a coating in here, but otherwise they are in really good shape and they're gonna be a really, really good addition to the build because uh, these rods are beefier, which helps uh, prevent any damage from happening. Uh, it's gonna prevent uh, them from bending, actually. So I just need to look what's up with the CK, XE, and stuff like that. Someone marked something on them, so I'm not sure exactly what that is. Maybe the position where they were? I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. And I have to check about that. So for now, piston is not what I need exactly. And the caps are not in here. All right, so if the caps are not here, they are probably still in there. In fact, are you in here, guys? Mm -mm -mm, not that I see. I see the bolts. 
but I don't see that's the head bolts I don't see the main cap actually hmm all right let me check and look for them it was sure that I was doomed for that to happen right so that that here's something we're gonna need soon the plastic gauge someone invented that and that's pretty amazing so I have them here and I'm gonna need them in uh, inches actually so hope they have the inches so I have some green one which is the one we need oh, that's in my way a little bit let's push that aside the brooms are in my way let's put them away like here all right where are you main cap have the big crankshaft box here otherwise I'm not sure where they could be which is a bit of a problem not sensors nothing that we need here we're gonna need uh, are these the crankshaft or rod bearing these are these are the crankshaft bearing mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna check on the internet with the the number the part number so there we go I'm gonna go here do that so uh, 807 XPN 010 there you go summit racing I guess yeah baby all right these are the rod bearing right here just gonna make sure because i see here the, it's written small block chevy but i think it's shared uh between i think these are shared uh with also the ls application Yo, my Summit Racing website has so much difficulties on that computer. I don't know why. I'm gonna try on Firefox instead of here, which shouldn't be the case. But there, Firefox. Summit Racing. All right. Hey, it's working better. We're. All right. King XP Series uh, rod bearing. Will these fi fit 05 5.3 Vortec? Yes. Perfect. Uh, King bearing. Uh... All right, what are you seeing you? Order for my application after plugging my info into Summit. Uh, okay. Hmm. They are getting me worried right here. Can you tell us what was your car actually? I think it's gonna be a thing of uh, measuring them. Cause someone's saying not to trust uh, the fitment, but check the fit. I'm gonna take a look. Uh. 
Hmm. I'm starting to wonder. Let me check. 2007. What do you have in there? Chevy. Seven. Yeah, okay, it should fit for the 6 liter Gen 3, Gen 4 engine. Alright, they are really working for a lot of things. So basically, the connecting uh, rod is uh, the connecting rod bearing should be pretty much the same for most LS. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. Alright, phew, I was starting to feel bad. We're gonna have to take a look, measure everything, but so far, so good. So that being said, these are the connecting rod uh, stuff. So we're gonna be uh, going from there. Poop, 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 poop. Put that, put that. Move the hair because they are getting in the way. So these are for later for the piston. So we're gonna put that aside. So we have now over there our main bearing uh, thingy. Lifter guide, not for now. Here, that's the main pulley, I think. Hell yeah. So that's gonna be for later on too. So that's not for now. Nux sensor kit, not for now. Total seal engine tool, this is what? Total seal piston ring. Oh, that's for uh, pushing the piston inside and test everything. All right, so that should be. So this here, that tool is just to push the ring at a certain depth where we can measure them for the gap. So that's gonna be in not too long, but not today. So that's gonna be awesome. What are these? These are the push rods, not now. What are you? Coil over, what? Uh, these are the wires, okay. These are the spark plug wires, really not now. That's gonna be towards the end. All right, we still need to find a bunch of things. Here are the piston rings, so I can put that aside for now, but these are going to be useful in not so long. So many boxes that I forget what they are doing, actually. The, this is the milling, so this is the oil pump, water pump, bracket, relocation bracket for the alternator, the set alternator in here. Push that on the bottom here. Uh, what are these? No clue. But there's something moving in there. I'm gonna have to open it to nil. That, that, nope, nope, nope. All right, these are the head bolts. So not for now, but eventually. These are the gaskets for the water pump. These are all the ignition coil. I'm gonna have to open that thing here. Why do I have a second mailing? Is that a power steering pulley or something? Probably something like that. Oh, this is the actual pump. So what is the mailing in here? I don't even know which, what is that thing? Oh, that's the chain. That's the timing chain, so that's coming next week probably, or something like that. I'm gonna open that box here because I have no clue what it is for. That's a lot of things. But yeah, right now I have no clue where I did put the, the main cap actually. I'm gonna have to look back at what I did uh, in the garage and everything, that's crazy. Actually, I'm not even sure I still have the footage of that when I dismantled that engine. Hmm. Worst case, we have to uh, buy some new one, but uh, hopefully it's not the case because uh, it's probably uh, still pricey and I'm not sure exactly how the fitment will be. All right, there you go. 
So this is getting a bit out of hand. Don't get how intense it was wrapped in there. Hello. Can you open it up please? Since I haven't opened it, I'm guessing that at the time I knew exactly what that was, but now I have no clue. Oh! Nice, these are parts from Apex Engineered actually. So these are uh, some bushing for our uh, kit, so it has nothing to do with that. But that's going around here. What's up with these? Right there. Even more thing, I guess. Hey, hey, okay. Well. There you go. Nothing that has anything to do with the engine. Hey, so that's not push, uh, putting us in a better position because I still, I'm still missing a bunch of part then and I need to find them. Am I pissing myself sometimes? Yes, because I'm really good, good at getting lost like this. Uh, these are all the different gaskets. So that's the gasket kit right here. And in here, what do I have? That's the oil pan, right? Yep, that's the new oil pan. That's not going to be anything that has... Don't have anything in here of any interest. There, what's up with that? That's all the parts I'm not supposed to reuse, technically. The thing being, technically, that's the important part. Other than that, hmm. All right. So I went through all that. So if I didn't send that with the actual engine. Did I just look not good enough in here? Have all the lifters, a bunch of things here. That, that. We don't have anything in here. These are the crankshaft bolts. So here I have everything that we should be uh, cleaning. Then it should be only parts. So I have all the bolts here. I don't know if I bought some new one, but I'm not sure for that application there. And then it should be all the matters of finding back those main cap that I've probably put away in a weird spot and don't remember doing that at all. Because they are pretty big, so I cannot have just lost them like this technically I hate myself sometimes so we have the bearings we have that where the hell did I put the main cap I don't have any 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 clue of throwing them somewhere or seeing them in any recent memory I would say which is a uh, bad it's actually not great. So the sets of spark plug for boost application. We're running some colder uh, spark plug that's gonna help with the firing. Uh, could they be in that actually? No, technically they, these were just that here. It was nothing else. 
But I say technically, I mean, if they are not anywhere else, it could be in there, I guess. Because it's not here, not here. I will have to take out this from underneath. I'm gonna have to take a look at multiple things because pretty much everything in general is here. Wait. I got him, I think. It's looking like it. Oh my God, they are going to be so dirty. I thought these were only the lifters, but holy crap. All right, we're gonna have a bit of cleanup to do. So these three, I should not have any use for them but I just got the parts we're looking for, so even more cleanup. So these here, I said that that box at the bottom should be of no use anymore. Old springs and stuff, uh, so I can just throw that in there, because these I've bought some new one. And there we go. So these are uh, the main blocks. So we're gonna have to... Uh, Go ahead and clean them pretty good. Like really, really good. They are not good looking right now. So I might throw that back in place or just actually push that to the side a little bit. Then these are going here. Might soak those into some mineral oil overnight when I come back tonight. These here gonna go like that we're gonna remove those and basically we're gonna be able to remove the bearing so the bearing surface as you can see these ones were a bit starting to get uh like damage dual side so here uh, we had a bit of damage in there that could be also by sitting over time, but pretty much that's what it's looking like and uh, these are going like this so basically what we have here, the little uh, hole in here are going to be what sits in there and that's going to allow the oil to move through that and fill that with oil when it's rotating. So that's the idea right there. Uh, we're gonna need to make sure, but basically you cannot really go wrong. There's a little one here, so one will mean it's sitting in here. And then we go one, two, three, four, five. And uh, there should be five, I think. One, two, three, four, five, yep. So that's gonna be the idea here. Uh, knowing that uh, our crank actually got grinded a little bit more, we are using some uh, 0.1 tolerance, uh, like thicker uh, bearing actually, because this has been grinded by 0.01. So 0.01 thicker bearing are going to cover for that. Minus 0.001 for the performance bearing that allows a little bit more oil in there to uh, help prevent any seizure in the thing there. So that's gonna be a thing. We're gonna be cleaning those. Uh, one thing important is to not uh, damage those surface and uh, the bearing surface. So we're gonna clean that into mineral oil probably tonight. So I can go ahead and remove these, remove that. So as you can see here, we have the bearing surface. So that's gonna be uh, all cleaned up. Bit of the old engine oil in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. So really good that we look at this cause we have a, still a bit of work to do on those. So uh, who was saying it will not take that long this morning uh, to make maybe uh, the engine assembly? Oh yeah, me, yikes. When I teared apart that engine, actually when I removed it from the car where it was, uh, in which it was, uh, when we removed uh, the oil plug, it was a magnetic oil plug in there and there was quite a bit of uh, metal, uh, like there was a bit of metal uh, on it, but like 
enough to get me a bit worried and honestly uh, in the end it's no it's not that bad because it actually was uh, some bearing material from the camshaft uh, when I got there and removed the cam from the engine when tearing it apart one of the cam bearing just came with the actual camshaft because it was pretty much beaten up so yeah here you can see this is another style of bearing that one is the one sitting in the middle so it's acting a little bit as a truss bearing this one too is scratched quite a bit so these ones are uh, that one is super important because basically the shaft will try to move uh, back uh, forward and backward and also shake up and down and this one at the center is really really helping a lot to maintain everything in place so super super important one that so if you want to see a little bit i'm gonna break the cam we all know that but oh seems like i know it's all good so there again so I was not planning on reusing those, but I kept them for now. Uh, for the meantime, because I didn't know exactly what I was about to do with those. But in the end, like I said, I won't be reusing them. Anyway, we cannot anymore since we have uh, grinded the camshaft a little bit more. So, yep. That here. For now, we're going like this, 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 this. And I'm positioning them on the side of the table in the order we are removing them so from one to five just because uh if there's any special like one that is specially damaged i want to take care of really really doing a really good measurement of what's going on there but they are pretty much all the same uh they all have like those few scratches but nothing too uh, major the engine was still running pretty well when uh, I got it so that's also a good thing so yeah there we go so here we are we have our parts we are missing the the cleanup thing to uh, help us with that I'm gonna throw that on the side there not too hard so we don't uh, bring some uh, dust with us but yeah basically these are what is sitting on top here so that one is going actually on the other side because the front is over there for the crank and uh, that one here will be the one sitting like this I won't make a contact with it but basically that's gonna sit right there and holding everything together at some point we are even going to uh, measure uh, any bad thing happening with that wheel so we're gonna make sure it's sitting flat uh, and uh, we are not having some wobbling that could uh, affect the signal sent by this because all the little tab here are sending to uh, it's a position sensor so it's clicking every time it's going through one of the teeth of the tooth teeth tooth tooth and uh, after that the computer knows where it is at at some point in there there's probably and I think I see it There's probably an empty spot usually that is used to uh, measure that. I don't see it actually. It should be having a missing tooth at one place. Oh, maybe not on those ones, but yeah, basically they are using that to uh, have a position reference and therefore uh, it's actually used to send a signal for the spark plug and stuff like that. All right. Here you can see two sets of bearing, two sets of bearing, and we should have the truss bearing in that last one there. Let's make sure. There you go. The special truss bearing. As you can see, these have a really dark black surface uh, this is because it's a special product on top of them that will actually um, 
how would I say that? This is acting actually as a protective coat that if there's any small metal particle uh, that are successfully going through the oil passage in here and going to the bearing surface, it will stick in that and it's a bit softer so it can just penetrate uh, the main surface a touch to uh, prevent any scratching on uh, the crank. So uh, this is the idea with those. So yeah, that's super important. Uh, I mean, I'm saying super important. It is kind of important just because, uh, is that one, two, three, four, okay. Just, I say it's kind of important, but it's basically, uh, it's mostly just like, a, again, prevention. So I bought some higher quality uh, bearing just to, for the sake of having a peaceful mind driving that car. So yeah, so that's gonna be a thing when we're gonna be able to clean up those. So let's see what else do we have in here in the little book. So pretty much he's going through uh, all the oil gallery and stuff that we need to clean uh, for us. For now, it's no big deal because we're gonna wait for uh, other thing. Uh, all that here, the cleanup of the throttle body and everything, we won't have to do that because everything's gonna be brand new. Same for uh, the oil pickup and uh, like the, the oil uh, pump and everything. That being said, we're gonna also have to make sure everything is uh, working and packing the uh, oil pump, but that's even true if it was a, a used one, because you need to prime it first to make sure uh, you won't be uh, lacking any oil at first. Here, that's what we're going to do. I want to see if there was a cleanup procedure for uh, the bearing cap here, just to see what they are doing with those. That's not getting looked there, not there. All right, so if needed, we are even able to uh, grind a little bit uh, the surface where uh, the main cap's going to sit. However, we don't want to grind it really hard, so we're just going to clean that. Honestly, I cannot see any proper damage. Is it? Am I seeing the true far? I can feel a little thing in here. So basically we're gonna be able to just make sure that these are sitting quite flush. And this way, knowing that these are coming from the same engine, usually the matching is pretty good. Uh, it's just that with like the 200,000 kilometers, these could have deformed a little bit. So that's where we're gonna have to measure everything and make sure the seat, they are sitting together really well. But uh, usually it's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna be reusing the bolts also, like I said, uh, from uh, those, uh, nothing to be worried about. It's not something they were saying is super important to change, just that you need to keep in mind uh, when doing so that you need to clean them up pretty well. And these one, sadly, uh, there was no cover on it. So they are really, really, really in need of a really good uh, cleanup. So we're gonna be brushing them and everything uh, tomorrow probably, because we don't really have what we need for that, yikes. I can actually start by spraying WD-40 on them, so. So that's what we're going to do. First of all, trying to soak them into some little WD-40, just starting to remove a uh, part of the oil and stuff on them. So that way it should actually help a little bit for our job tomorrow. There you go. So I'm gonna let that on the workbench here. And tomorrow we're gonna be uh, working with uh, mineral oil well, uh, mineral spirits it's called, and uh, we're gonna be uh, putting that in there. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna buy that tonight, so I'm probably gonna set that in uh, the mineral uh, spirits tonight. 
and then uh, tomorrow morning we're gonna brush that and uh, so since it's gonna be in there for overnight it's it's soft enough that it should just help remove uh, the, the the burnt oil on top here which is carbon basically so uh, that should be useful so let's throw that over here do I have anything else Uh, that I just want to know. I'm feeling like I might be missing a few things here and there. Like, I'm saying I haven't uh, changed them, but I think it could be a good idea, and I don't know if I'm supposed to have some in here. So I'm gonna check again, because these are the head bolts, so these are not for what we need to, but I am I have kind of a feeling that I should have. That's the lifters, yep. sealed that's the tool that we we're looking at here what is this knock sensor that's not what we're looking at uh, hmm I have kind of a feeling that I should have those main cap uh, bolts all right let me check Oops. Fasteners. Okay, some great news for any rebuild is uh, that many of the factory fasteners can be reused as there's a good chance they will be in decent condition. This is because GM used very high quality bolts through. And that's a fact. You don't always have to go, hey, what's up, Maggie? Hey! Uh, this is because, uh, no, no, no. Whether you're talking about engine cover bolts or uh, main cap bolts, chances are you will find minimal corrosion and can reuse these fasteners provided there are no issue. A notable exception to the reusable uh, reusability rule is the LS head bolts. Okay, yes. So basically I'm right, I can reuse them. And that's probably what I read back then in the days when I order all those parts, beginning of summer. What's good, comment ça a été ton cours hier? Ça a super bien été. Front cam. Front cam. There you go, boom. Ça a super bien été pour de vrai. <laughs> Il y, a, il y a un fun story, genre pas tant fun, mais bref. Euh, en gros, le cours en soi, super bien été, ça a été nice. Euh, tu sais, de revoir à nouveau la cohorte, mais là, après la pause de Noël, leur demander euh, qui à main levée a euh, travaillé un peu sur la 3D dans le temps des fêtes. T'as pas beaucoup qui ont levé la main, mais classique. On s'y attend tout ça, puis il commence à avoir le petit speech de « Hey, dernière session, c'est le temps de vous donner tout ça. » Et surtout de commencer à parler, entre autres, que hey, l'industrie en ce moment, c'est un peu moyen, autant cinéma que jeux vidéo. Euh, je, cinéma beaucoup plus 2023, euh, mais jeux vidéo euh, vraiment pas tant hot d'un dernier mois, tout ça. Puis entre autres, je leur donnais l'exemple qu'il y a euh, du côté de Nesting, euh, à Québec, au fond, ils ont eu genre du monde à côté, ils ont été volés des employés un peu partout parce qu'ils ont monté à 35 à peu près dans l'équipe, 35-40, parce qu'il y avait un gros projet euh, déjà financé par une autre boîte qui, au fond, les, po les possédait d'un sens. Euh, C'est grâce à cette boîte-là qu'ils ont pu starter. Mais là, la boîte a décidé de couper des projets toutes parce que ça n'allait pas assez bien financièrement, tout ça. Les clients sont pas au rendez-vous et tout. Puis euh, ça fait en sorte que Nesting, compagnie qui a à peine deux ans, euh, ont licencié tout le monde. Là. Il reste, je pense, trois personnes dans la compagnie. Là. Puis c'est les trois boss. Puis, tu sais, basically, c'est une compagnie fantôme en ce moment. Il n'y euh, a plus rien qui se passe. Fait que, genre, ça risque de mourir. Fait que euh, ça, puis... Comme je leur dis ça, j'ai une amie aussi qui m'a posté tout de suite après mon cours. Fait que ça, j'ai pas pu encore leur dire, mais qui appuie le point. Euh, Riot Games. Riot Games ont euh, fait de la restructuration puis de la réorientation de projet, tout ça. Ce qui a euh, amené 11 de la compagnie euh, à être licenciée. Fait que 515 employés, je crois, 511, 515, euh, de quoi de même, euh, employés à être licenciés. C'était big, là. Riot Games, c'est énorme. Fait que euh, c'est ça. Fait que. 
ça vient comme appuyer un peu beaucoup le point de forcé parce qu'en ce moment, c'est pas, c'est pas ta route, mais c'est l'industrie du divertissement, je veux dire, up and down, constant, puis il y a des années que c'est malade, il y a des années que c'est plus slow, puis ça fait partie de la game, euh, de, c'est là où c'est le fun d'avoir un poste permanent, t'sais, moi pour vrai, j'ai hâte de voir comment ça va me prendre de temps à me replacer quand je vais commencer à chercher très activement, euh, tout simplement parce que ça se peut que ça soit rough, malgré un bon démo et tout, ça se peut que ça soit très rough, fait que euh, j'ai hâte de voir, mais bref, c'est ça, c'est, c'est de quoi de particulier un peu euh, comme situation. Puis je leur disais justement, on est au premier cours. Mon cours, vous commencez à me connaître, genre j'aime ça donner du temps libre, travailler sur vos choses. Travailler sur vos choses. Genre, s'il va falloir que vous soyez qui casse parce que ça se fera pas, genre demain vous faire engager, il va falloir que vous sortiez du lot parce que non seulement il y a toutes les gens qui iraient du ailleurs, Appliquer à des places en télétravail, c'est plus facile que jamais. Mais en même temps, tu as beaucoup de monde qui n'ont pas d'emploi, qui vont être en recherche d'emploi, qui ont de l'expérience. Fait qu'il faut que tu te battes aussi contre eux d'un certain sens, puis tu fasses valoir que tu es hot. Fait que j'étais comme, hey, c'est l'heure de forcer. Fait que, mais pour de vrai, c'était cool. Là. Le, le cours était vraiment, vraiment sick en soi. Là. C'est ma session bonbon. Je l'aime, cette session-là. Je l'aime beaucoup, beaucoup. Uh, to, 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 to. This means uh, for the, that the first time uh, they are tightened down, they permanently stretch slightly. Fortunately, new head bolts are inexpensive and uh, even offered as part of a full kit. See Chapter 8. Uh, the only other engine bolt uh, that is po- impossible to reuse is the one that threads into the crankshaft, smooth and secure the harmonic balancer. OK, oh, OK, OK, is, uh, which one is the one that threads into the crankshaft? OK, so the one going at the end there. And that is a brand new one, I think, with my pulley. I hope so. Otherwise, I'm going to just grab a new one. Let me check. I think it is a new one. Because I think the old one was pretty much damaged. Ah, uh, no, that's the old one. All right, so that one, we cannot reuse it. So I'm gonna be ordering one tonight. That's for sure. Because basically we need that ASAP. I thought it will come with it, actually. That's weird. But yeah, the harmonic balancer uh, is the main pulley at the front of the engine. It's connected straight to that part here. Oui, il faut se battre contre les seigneurs. <rire> Venez vous battre, je vous attends. Mais ouais, non, c'est ça. Mais en fait, quand t'es junior, tu te bats contre les mid, principalement. Parce que tu sais, je te dirais, moi, je me bats un peu contre les mid, dans le sens que euh, une compagnie est toujours en mode qu'est-ce qui coûte le moins cher. Fait qu'il faut que mon efficacité vale la différence de salaire avec un mid, basically. Puis, euh, un peu à l'inverse, il faut qu'un junior ait tellement de willpower, puis tu sais, ait un talent brut qui est là, qui est visible, plus une bonne vibe, puis un vouloir pour que tu te fasses engager en mode genre, OK, on pourrait peut-être engager un mid plutôt que se faire chier à former un junior, mais lui, il a l'air sa coche, puis il va coûter moins cher. Tu sais, le junior a son avantage, le salaire, mais par contre, tu as peut-être deux, trois mois que tu n'es vraiment pas tant efficace que ça. Fait qu'engager un junior, c'est un peu du long terme, tu sais, c'est, c'est worth it si tu tu prévois y donner un contrat d'un an et plus. Euh, sinon, c'est très difficile de dire que ça vaut la peine. Tu t'engages pas quelqu'un qui sort de l'école pour quatre mois. Parce que tu vas en passer deux au moins à te faire chier avec tout et à prendre les petits détails de l'industrie. Fait que, c'est, c'est là que le, le, la balance est un peu rough. Euh, mais c'est ça. Moi, à l'inverse, c'est ça. C'est que quelqu'un qui est mid, mid, genre mid-high, mid, euh, genre, c'est ça, mid, voire presque senior. Euh, qu'est-ce qui arrive, c'est qu'au final, euh, 
T'sais, ils peuvent être extra efficaces et tout, puis c'est juste des années d'expérience qui manquent un peu. Ce qui fait que, genre, sur papier, tu regardes ça, puis ça peut être l'équivalent d'engager un senior quasiment, d'engager un semi de là qui a, exemple, cinq ans d'expérience. Fait que, tu c'est là qu'il faut vraiment venir balancer les choses, puis essayer de trouver qu'est-ce qui fit le plus à la team. Bien, tu sais, avant Noël, j'avais parlé que j'avais eu une entrevue chez Squeeze Tout, mais ça choquait exactement pour ça. Euh, tout le monde était intéressé, le superviseur comme euh, le, le superviseur Light comme qui est mon ancien boss, euh, tu sais, plein de monde de la team qui me connaissent puis tout, puis genre, il était comme, yes, on va en tour, mais genre, au final, quand ils ont checké le budget, ça a fait, bon, on a juste un budget pour un mid. Puis, tu sais, j'avais demandé rien encore, là. Tu sais, il m'avait dit, euh, niveau euh, salaire, tu t'attends à quoi? Puis, j'ai fait comme, pff, faites une offre. Genre, moi, ça me dérange pas. J'avais ça, ça, ça chez Sony, mais je sais que ça sera pas ça. Fait que faites ce que vous voulez. Puis, euh, c'est ça. Fait que ça, j'étais super open. Puis, au final, ils ont engagé un mid. Mais, tu sais, c'est ça, genre... Ça n'a pas marché pour là. Par contre, la semaine passée, ça jasait encore de potentiellement de quoi qui s'en vient pour moi parce que là, euh, ils sont sur un long métrage. Euh, C'est intense au bout sur ce long métrage-là. Ils ont du retard un peu. Il manque de, de gens. Puis là, ils vont peut-être avoir un ou deux contrats sur le site. Fait que le superviseur Lightcom like s'est fait demander qui c'est que t'enlèves du film pour ça. Puis il a juste fait de bah, non. <rire> Je peux pas enlever personne. On est déjà en retard. Fait que euh, il va falloir engager, guys. Fait que il guise de, de chercher à engager pour du contrat court terme, puis là-dessus, je suis comme, ben, euh, allô, c'est justement, Flo a eu un meeting one-on-one -on -one avec le dude, puis euh, il a demandé, genre, en tout, euh, en ce moment, il fait quoi? Puis Flo était comme, il est enfermé dans son garage, fait que c'est le bon moment, fait que j'étais comme, yeah! On va le voir rendu là, no big deal. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was saying that, uh, basically, Harmonic Balancer, which is the main pulley, uh, it helps. Actually, it has like a rubber part in it, uh, which basically helps remove any vibration from uh, that part here. And basically, uh, they tend to fail. It is a weak uh, part. Like, it is a weak point on the engine uh, for the LS engine. And uh, so I upgraded mine. It's gonna be one that's a bit heavier, which technically results in power loss not a big deal for us at the moment uh, since we're aiming for the moon and uh, basically that's uh, being said uh, the one the upgraded one's gonna help to have something really more uh, viable and uh, with a long lifetime so that's gonna be cool and uh, yeah so just need to buy uh, the main bolts for that because I didn't know but seems like I need to replace that let's keep going time for some lecture Hope it works out for you. Oh, hell yeah. I'm not too worried, to be fair. Like, I have... I need to make sure I'm not waiting until I'm in trouble, uh, like for the financial uh, side of it. But basically, I'm not too worried. I have a pretty good uh, demo reel and everything, so uh, I'm uh, counting a lot of that on that. But uh, yeah, I just need to start looking for a job before I'm like struggling financially. But for now, I'm still in pretty good shape. So I'm like, eh. Let's keep going on the Datsun. That's the idea so far. So that's why I need to push hard on that because when I'm going to be back working full time, it's going to be harder to finish that. So now the target is everything done for uh, mid to end of March so that when the ECU arrive, we plug that in there and we just uh, can go and start the car. That will be like top tier uh, stuff. And in the meantime, we should receive the brakes and uh, the brake system, the suspension, system and everything so uh, that's gonna be a big big deal all right so a high performance application may wish to upgrade some of the more highly stressed factory engine bolts with aftermarket ones IRPI is by far the best source of for super strong engine bolts uh, and stud uh, and the stuck main bolts uh, should be replaced if you plan on making a lot of horsepower fuck So, I guess I'm gonna be uh, buying some more stuff. That's gonna put us late on reassembling the engine, yikes. Gonna need to find something else to do in the meantime. 
To a lesser extent, the uh, same goes for the factory head bolts, which generally will uh, only require an upgrade if you're making lots of boost or throwing a bunch of nitrous, not nitrous, but boost. Um, so yeah, so we might go with ARP uh, studs for uh, the the main cap. Really? <laughs> Uh, also for stainless fastener for those seeking a cosmetic upgrade uh, for boats, uh, no, I don't care about the cosmetic of it. Putting together an LS engine requires more than just uh, the major parts uh, we have gone through above. Uh, here are some pointers on uh, some other not insignificant parts you will either need to get a hold uh, f for your rebuild project or may think about upgrading for a high performance application. The oil pump, we got this. So oil pump, we're gonna run uh, one with increased uh, flow and pressure. So that's gonna compensate for uh, the turbo that's actually asking for some. Si five Uga Dugas uh, should do it. No need for a torque sheet. <laughs> Sounds good. What's up, Rack? How you doing, man? Uh, I am gonna take a seat actually, cause right now it's boring to stay like crouch and everything. I should have read a little bit more the manual before uh, saying we're ready for uh, the engine rebuild because basically we are quite ready. Uh, I'm gonna soak uh, the main cap tonight so they are going to be uh, clean tomorrow. Oh shit, that was still open. Yikes, see ya battery. But uh, yeah, so basically that, uh, I just realized I'm gonna need a new bolt for the main pulley, so the harmonic balancer at the front. And uh, other than that, uh, just realized that the plan of reusing the uh, bolts for the main cap, like they say it's okay, it's working great and everything, but after that there's a, uh, High performance application may wish to upgrade some of the more highly stressed factory engine bolts uh, like the main bolts uh, that are the main cap. Yay! <laughs> Dual front. There you go. So if you want to see the little book, oh, the thing the cam is dead. Oh, there you go. So uh, basically, yeah, so I might have to order those. I still think I could actually uh, use the factory one. Remember to always install crank bearing and rod uh, bearing dry, only lube uh, the crank surface. You mean like uh, the underneath, uh, basically I have the old one here. So you say uh, this side here, the top, I will say right there to be dry and uh, only lube the uh, crank so that it gets in contact with that. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. Cause basically you need to that to be dry cause you need the, some, uh, the spacing to be good. And that's part of what we're doing right now. Basically, uh, we're gonna be uh, doing a pre-assembly uh, like steps. So we're gonna use engine uh, oil on the crank at first, but yeah, we're not going to put anything behind cause basically we need to tight, to torque everything down and take measurements. So we're gonna use our trusty plastic gauge uh, to uh, measure everything since uh, the crankshaft was also uh, one tenth of an inch uh, grinded. So uh, yeah. You need it to hold in uh, via fr friction. Oh yeah. That's true, eh? Thinking of it like this makes total sense. So yeah, so basically we're gonna need uh, that. I think I'm gonna be uh, pre-assembling everything with uh, the actual OEM uh, bolts since we can reuse them like it said here, but in the meantime order some uh, high performance one just so we are sure that the crankshaft is holding really tight in place. Intakes manifold and throttle body, that's not something we have to look for. We already have our uh, brand new one, a harmonic balancer, it's already uh, bought. So this is also an aftermarket one we're putting in there because like I said, they are a weak point. 
When talking plastic gauge measurement, make sure uh, to talk all fasteners around it uh, since some block uh, will slightly warp when untorqued. Uh, they make fancy torque plates uh, for some engine. Okay, uh, I don't think I, it's gonna be a torque plate for those, but basically I know uh, it's gonna be, I need to torque everything in the uh, sequence to make sure everything goes to its place. Uh, everything is explained really, really well in that uh, manual here. So yeah, that's something we're gonna take uh, a look at and make sure we're doing properly because I know it might be some uh, something that uh, change a lot of things 46 we got to go uh, you are in spec nice easy I'm gonna use some bananas for scale so basically here uh, that's the machine shop that's everything that has been done to the actual uh, engine block the cleaning process we went through part of it we are waiting for some brushes and uh, uh tomorrow and i need to grab some uh mineral spirits tonight to uh, basically finish the cleaning then after that uh, what we're gonna need to do is uh and i'm gonna grab the actual thing uh i'm talking to you about uh rack to it is pre-assembly procedure, so I have an old chapter on what to verify and everything. They say don't think of doing that in one sitting. Uh, they are not actually lubing only the uh, crankshaft on these, but yeah, they are installing everything uh, dry, then adding uh, just a touch of oil on the surface of the bearing, so on the inner side here, and after that, uh, sitting the crank in place. But uh, yeah, main bearing clearance, install main bearing bearing with the main caps removed install the upper main uh, bearing shell in the block these upper uh, halves have holes uh, have holes in them for oil to enter from the block note that the center bearing is the truss bearing on ls engine uh, so yeah that's what i was saying uh, also put the lower halves uh, of the main bearings in the main cap use no lubricant whatsoever on any of these bearings shell uh, it will interfere with bearing clearance measurement once installed wipe them uh, with a clean cloth uh, to remove any possible contamination so that makes sense that's what we want and that's what we're going to do after that uh, you can lube uh, the bearing uh, I just mean uh, the crank side uh, not just the crank yeah exactly okay makes sense so that's what I'm probably going to do and they are using a small brush to do that I might be using that I will see uh, later on but yeah I'm gonna install them properly uh, and dry uh, after that now after giving the crank a uh, main dry a quick uh, wipe uh, gently lay the crank in place in the block again do not use oil on any surface uh, they must be clean and dry why are they putting oil okay no here they are not putting oil just yet that's probably for the the assembly at the end right there it's everything dry to test the clearance so see at first we're gonna lay everything dry in place just put the crank in place and then uh, add a bit of plastic gauge on top of uh, the crank of everything we can see and then after that we're gonna be uh, torquing everything lay a piece of plastic gauge on top of each main uh, bearing journal uh, once the crank is in uh, bearing clearance measurement so here there's a bunch of things here uh, I'm gonna have to look that see step 8 for checking uh, through so step 8, but yeah, what is the order? All right, so I'm gonna have to go to uh, chapter 8 because they already covered that uh, the torque sequence So basically I'm gonna be uh, going around that and uh, using so a uh, suggested uh, LS bearing clearance is a uh, 0.0008 to 0.0025 uh, for uh, that Depending on how much performance you're uh, looking for on my side uh the bearing i have over there uh the king bearing uh king racing bearing uh they are some performance one that are adding 0.001 of clearance in the idea of having more oil through it so i don't know if you have seen these uh, already uh rack but i think you're gonna appreciate them 
dual side. So I will try to show it to you, but it's hard a little bit. See, yeah, not too bad. Reflections, not too bad. So basically, these has a point oh oh. Yeah, 0.001 uh, extra clearance with uh, the bearing, basically, uh, with the crank surface, just to allow a touch more oil in between the crank and the bearing. And also, uh, they are, you can see they are black on the surface and not shiny silver. Uh, this here is an extra layer of uh, protection, which is a little bit softer than a uh, normal bearing material. So this, L super tiny, uh, this super thin layer of protection is actually allowing any, any, any sort of debris to just carve a little bit into that. So instead of scratching the actual bearing surface, it can just get stuck in that uh, first thin layer of stuff. And so uh, kind of protect the crankshaft from getting a scratch and everything. So uh, it's really there to uh, improve reliability uh, uh, on performance application. So this is what we're gonna use. I've heard a lot of good thing with that. And also uh, one of the reason I'm going with the King Racing is that the guy from who I bought the turbo that's gonna be in the car is uh, has done multiple engine build. And uh, he actually changed the turbo on his BMW E92 setup that had exactly that engine, LQ4, uh, because uh, he reached nine, he, he reached each 815 horsepower with it and he was maxing out the turbo so he decided to go even bigger because I think he was looking for a thousand horsepower so basically yeah he went with a bigger uh, setup and uh, when I asked for uh, all the details on his engine build it's pretty much the same kind of recipe we're doing right there with king bearings in place so yeah this is the idea right there so a uh, lot of research behind that Plastic gauge, we're gonna do that tomorrow probably if everything goes well, if we can have everything we need to clean. I feel like maybe tomorrow morning we won't be able to uh, stream just because we're missing a bunch of part to finish cleaning uh, the crank. However, I'm saying that we might be able to actually stream and use the mineral oils to do that. Two turbo cake, no, 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 fuck no. I don't wanna go a uh, twin turbo, like it's okay cool but I kind of have a preference for uh, single turbos. Uh, just, I don't know why, but twin turbo is adding double everything, which is not that great, to be fair. It's getting a mess. Uh, yeah, you say that because of compound turbo. I mean, technically you have a quicker response for uh, from a twin turbo than a single turbo, but you should be able to reach more power with a, with a single turbo normally, just gonna lag a little bit more. Again, it depends on what kind of generation you're going with. So yeah, dual front, there you go. So from here, uh, what we're gonna do is pretty much uh, go ahead and uh, once we're done with that, we're gonna be adding all the main crank and everything. Here, it seems like they are going with uh, the plastic gauge. Once the plastic gauge is done, is uh, the crankshaft run out. So basically, we're gonna be uh, putting again everything in place. I'm just gonna have to check that. I bought uh, the, actual, the actual gauge to do uh, this step. Basically, we're gonna look if uh, there's any play up and down on uh, the actual uh, crankshaft. 100 subs Vinto puts a blower on the Z. <laughs> That's not enough to cover the expense for it. Why would you want me to put a freaking supercharge in there? I prefer turbo, man. Like, supercharge are cool, but they are linear. Turbo actually tries to kill you when it kicks in uh, at around 3000 RPM, because you're going zero to 100. Exactly, we will never financially recover. Mm -mm -mm. So we're gonna be looking at any uh, play in the crankshaft to make sure everything's good. And then installed crankshaft with lubricated uh, bearing. 
and then we're gonna be uh, spinning it around and then at this point we're gonna be uh, checking the wheel at the back so uh, that one right here that the big uh, the big wheel here we're gonna be uh, basically verifying that everything uh, it has no play in it or anything oh actually lateral movement beyond 0.028 inch indicates uh, the need to replace the relocator ring but this one is brand new by the way uh the shop replaced it on their own expense because they uh damage it uh some engine even require tolerance as tight as 0.01 don't ignore a problem here as it means your current position sensor may not be able to deliver a proper signal that's what i was talking to you earlier that's going to be super super important all right, after that's gonna be piston, uh, but first of all, it's gonna be the install of the crankshaft after that. So that's gonna be a big one. Uh, can't wait for that, honestly, that's gonna be cool. Uh, I feel like, I don't know why, that's still the pre-assembling procedure. I don't know if we're taking everything out again after that. If so, that's crazy. What are they doing? All right, we're gonna need, cause after that we're gonna be also, uh, we need to have the crank in place and then we're gonna be checking uh, for the crank, for uh, the rod bearing clearance and uh, the rod uh, side clearance. So we have a filler gauge for that, that's all good. Oh shit, and we're even going to check uh, if everything clears the side of the cylinder. So, uh, cool. Then, position here. All right, we're gonna have a bunch of things to do already uh, on that, so that's pretty cool. Looking forward to that. We're gonna be doing the top dead center uh, marking. When are they doing uh, the piston ring, actually? That's one thing I'm curious about, because I don't have a... Uh... Oh, they are, uh, they are actually putting the piston with no ring in there, just to uh, test everything. Uh, while we are talking about horsepower, uh, will metal injection provide benefit or only uh, really fusing turbo? I know uh, people use a mist nozzle to spray an O2 in their turbo inlet, but yeah, uh, it will be adding a uh, power for sure uh, but the car is already going to have way too much power but basically uh, methanol injection is also a really good way to cool down the cylinder from the combustion itself so uh, the mix of air to methanol is actually uh, bringing colder air into a uh, colder uh, combustion into the cylinder which will result in uh, more power output but also a cooler explosion which is really not bad to help uh, keep down the temperature however like i said it's a bit crazy my old neighbor before uh, he moved uh, he was he had a lexus yes uh, is 300 and uh like the old one the old toyota alteza uh, so he had a single turbo setup on a 1JZ and a 1J or 2J or one and a half JZ yeah it was a 2JZ uh, bottom end with a 2J uh, yeah 2JZ bottom end with a 1JZ uh, head and uh, basically so a one and a half uh, JZ they call them and uh, basically a uh, single uh, turbo two uh, two because I want to say it uh, two waste gate and stuff like that and he was uh, actually putting a methanol injection on it uh, to help uh, the rally uh, yeah so reliability uh, it can help uh, it's always it's the kind of things and i'm not an expert on that okay so uh take that with a grain of salt in there but like basically from what i understand from it it can help provide a bit of reliability if you're not turning it up to its max thing because basically you can make more power with it so if you can make more power what are you going to do you're gonna crank it right like 
anybody doing that kind of modification are usually not doing that for uh, the reliability reason. They are there for the power, which will, in that case, not bring more reliability. So that's where you need to be really, really uh, like uh, safe and true to yourself with that because it could go bad. But yeah, water met is not something I'm looking forward on this car, uh, not at all at this point. Uh, I will look a little bit more on uh, probably E85 uh, tune instead of anything else. But like the fuel pump are not designed for that. Uh, most of the fuel system is not designed for that. So there will be a conversion to do. And uh, that's also a way to improve reliability. E85 use more fuel, but also uh, burn cooler than uh, actual fuel, so it helps on reliability. Even though it's creating a lot of water into uh, the engine, which means you need to take care of uh, the oil change, you need to make it a little uh, bit quicker. But uh, again, here in Quebec, we don't have the 85 uh, anywhere near me. Like I think it's a like four or five hours drive to just get some. And did a new fan. <laughs> Almost did it to my Wrangler because of overheating uh, when just trail cruising. Yeah, basically, usually you can go with just uh, some proper cooling thing. Uh, in here, we're gonna have a three row uh, cooling, uh, like radiator uh, for the cooling system, plus a single big fan on, with a custom shroud I'm gonna make probably. So uh, that's the idea here. Uh, the fan is over here somewhere, it's there. So uh, we're gonna be using that, and the fan's gonna be plugged straight to the uh, ECU which means the ECU is gonna check the engine temp and turn it on when it needs to turn on so that's gonna be really really cool all right so after that we're gonna go with piston in there verifying everything uh, we're gonna make sure everything seems in place uh, we're gonna have a lot of things to read around here uh, and then we're gonna find the top dead center. Uh, I don't have that tool, but we're gonna work it out. And we're gonna make sure everything seems in place. All right, after that, what else? Yo, the pre-assembling is quite a huge thing. So. All right, Rack, I don't know if you're still there. If you're still there, uh, have you ever done an engine rebuild uh, on your own? Because here uh, they are like measure valve spring installed height, but I'm like, I have a di direct uh, replacement. So I don't know why I will do that. Because basically it seems a bit useless uh, to do it. Even though that's true, I am changing the, uh, like it's the same valves and everything so i'm just changing the spring but basically it should go straight in place so i don't know why i would do that and they are doing a yeah, I think they are going a bit nuts because they are verifying even like the length of the push rod and stuff like that. But I think that uh, that's something we're gonna be uh, able to see by ourselves, like really, really easily. I could ask if someone uh, near me has uh, the actual thing. Okay, and for the piston ring, it's right here. They are doing that right there, that's crazy. I'm gonna have to uh, see what's the clearance I need uh, for uh, my little turbo setup. And yeah, here it seems like, yeah, they we're going to restart from, uh, from the start there, which is a bit crazy. It's been a long road to get to where you're uh, at right now. Think about it. You came up with a plan of action uh, for your rebuild before even turning a single wrench. You acquired the tools that were needed to the project, blah, 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 blah. Before you begin, at this point, a few last words are appropriate. Before beginning final assembly, you should have all of the applicable tools listed in chapter two in uh, hand and ready to use. Read uh, through this chapter. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do that. 
You should have performed all applicable pre-assembly procedure listed in Chapter 7 and had any and all additional machine work performed on your part as appropriate. And even though you went through the component cleaning process, Chapter 6, before embarking on pre-assembly, you will need uh, to have cleaned all of your engine components one last time before embarking on final assembly. Remember, contamination left on parts can ruin your engine. I will just uh, I will just confirm by measuring in case uh, of any possible deviation in uh, parts or something uh, should be evident. So, yeah, well, could be, could be, could not be, but that's basically meaning what what I'm. What's pissing me off a little bit with those is that I bought some of the tools, but other tools in here, like measuring uh, the valve, measuring stuff like that, it's just like you're gonna buy a tools that because it's for the especially LS application, they are selling a piece of metal, a hundred dollars, and you're gonna use it once. So I'm like, come on guys, like for real, it's just pissing me off. Because I know it's not like anywhere near uh, the cost of production of the piece of the part itself. So I'm like, oh. All right, that, that. Like install doll uh, indicator on lifter. Okay, yeah, no worries. I bought that one. What's the other one I was looking at? One I don't know if I'm gonna need or not is uh, the the uh, connecting rod uh, clamp to basically hold it in place. But I have uh, clamps that are not metal; are actually are are aluminum. I don't, I don't know. I need to check. I think they are plastic, which should do the job to uh, just put the, my things like the connecting rod straight into the vice grip. So that should be a thing that, that I can do. But yeah, we're going to have to uh, take a look at this and make sure we are OK. So it might mean uh, we will have a bit of a problem here and there at some point. But yeah, uh, we'll see. What was the other tool I saw that I was like, yeah, the degree wheel, you know you need one. So they are selling that for uh, for such a huge price, but like at this point, you know you need it. So I haven't bought like all the dial caliper and everything to uh, basically test the roundness and the measurement of everything. Mm, I'm having a little bit of a problem, but yeah, that, that thing, uh, I'm gonna check, wait a sec, I'm gonna check what's the price of it, cause... What's up with that? Okay, uh... So, I was saying, uh, the, what they call it? It's all in chapter two, so let's go there. That's chapter three. That, exactly that. Ball spring height gauge. Because I have most of them, of the tools they listed here, it's just like, valve spring. No, that's not the one. All right, it's kind of cheap and it can be here for uh, Thursday. And that's for uh, the head, so uh, it's $26. What's up there? Gotta love the price of vehicle or engine specific parts. Oh, hell yeah. All right, that one's cheap. It's like $26 for that. Boink. So I'm gonna take a look at this I just don't know uh, I'm gonna check if uh, it seems to be a good application for here what we're doing here
the pro form one is a hundred four dollars that makes no sense it's crazy in order to ensure your vault spring will be at the correct install height and thereby uh, provide the right amount of seat pressure you will need a Volspring high gauge uh, well primarily used during a high performance rebuild this item can be useful in stock rebuild too uh, you will need uh, one that will work in the range of your Volspring required uh, installed height and will fit uh, the diameter uh, of your Volspring retainers uh, so you should probably hold off on buying this gauge until uh, you have those items all right let's see the valve spring then if we need to order stuff that's why we're doing all that so ow so engine assembling today <laughs> good blag good joke all right here's a box i haven't opened yet it is the camshaft i haven't take a look at it since it arrived so let me remove that now let's send that in here so let's see how good it is I don't want to drop my stuff anywhere there you go there you go imagine it's not that oh yeah it's the cam actually here we go that should be the spring we'll take a look here dual side all right let's see if we are getting the goodies there. Woo! So dual spring are going to be used for that build. So these are going to be wonderful. So uh, there's like a tiny spring in there plus a thick spring on the other side. All the luck, everything here that we should need. So the washers and everything. So let's go. Trick flow specialties. Trick flow. Trick flow specialties. So, one point eight install high. Maximum recommended valve lift is a uh, 0.65, which is supposed to be in the spec of the cam. Let me check if I have the cam here, specification. Uh, probably going to be on it actually. The Summit Performance Pro LS Turbo Cam. Imagine they send the wrong thing. I will be so pissed because I ha have that since forever and never opened it. All right, so it's supposed to be the stage three uh, turbo cam uh, for that. So we're gonna have, uh, yeah, the valve is uh, 0.60 and 0.57. So we are uh, in the ratio. This is a kit that will sell all together basically. So we should be doing pretty good on that. I'm gonna make sure it is actually the right uh, one, but here we are. So we have the camshaft right here, all oiled up in there, all looking pretty. So, and all sealed. So this is the cam that's gonna go choo choo. So I bought a turbo cam, so I'm not looking for that V8 uh, aggressive sound especially. I'm really just looking on something that will spool the turbo soon enough. So uh, a bit more aggressive down there uh, instead of uh, on high RPM. And we're gonna look for that amazing result. So here we're gonna use that to uh, also figure out what tools we need to buy. 
and we have stickers that we are never going to use. The next person to get five gifted sub will be receiving all the stickers I'm not using from the build. <laughs> all right, uh, that, that. Uh, let's see this and this. I'm gonna go take a look at uh, the cam to see if the specification are good. Summit racing.com. And then on the search section. We're gonna go for Summit Cam Shaft. I'm gonna take a look. Uh, year, it was for a 2003 Chevrolet. Oh no, that's uh, not the right place to write those, it's the engine. Chevrolet. Gen 3, the 6 liter one, get result. And from there, I should have a, what they call the turbo. Stage 3, LS. Hmm. I feel like there's more than the last time. Stage two Pro LS uh, Turbo Cam, that but in stage three version. Well, it seems like the stage three might be just the upgraded valve because uh, that seems to be pretty much up there. Oh no, it's uh, the intake and exhaust duration that are different. So uh, let me check for the stage three. Mm -mm -mm. Can I get the proper one? What is the part number actually? It's a, uh... okay, it's just that that is changing. So if I'm big braining the, the URL, I should be able to just that hey, hey so stage 3 pro ls turbo so uh 232 intake 234 exhaust yep 115 of lob separation yep plus five advance yep uh other than that Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, all right, so that's the proper parts. Let's go. We have everything we need here. And with that combo here, uh, let's see if I have the spring uh, stuff. High lift. Uh, all right, all that, cool. So we're doing great on that. Let's go. So this is the good thing. They didn't mess up, so this is cool for us. That means I can throw that back in here and I can throw that box back in place with the spring actually in there too. Because after that, we're gonna be uh, just looking at what we need to order to verify uh, the sitting height of the springs. Because that's the point where we need to make sure I'm not bucking anything. We want to make sure everything's going to be sitting in place. Up. There we go. First time we were opening that box. More unboxing video. For more unboxing video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See, Micah? I've done my uh, the line. The little pickup line to get more followers. Easy. So, from that said, I have these, so that's good. Uh, they say that uh, you need to ensure to have- Did you know uh, with, with Amazon Prime, you get there a free you go. sub yeah, every maybe. month? Any primers? One point six to two point oh, that will be uh, right in the spec because we need a one point eight. 
also close to the bottom uh, part of that, but yes, yeah, should be good. Uh, oh, wait, it's 1.6 to 2.0 centimeters and not inches. So we need to make sure we're uh, actually buying the right thing. So what would it be? 1.8, oh my God, stop messing up. 1.8 inch, two centimeter. 4.5, holy crap. So uh, 4.5 centimeters, so uh, that's really not the one I was looking at, telling you that. It's more something like this one, I think. For motor V8, so for V8 engine. All right, and it's cheaper. Oh, it's so, it's it will be here so late, so. All right, vol spring high micrometer. Tool V8. Let's see if I can find another one. That one will be here so late, no. That one, still late. It's going in February. Yikes. And there's the other one. I could buy the one at $100 and then, oh, there's one here, a bit uh, less cheap, $40, but it will be actually here next Monday. 4.1 to 5.6 and I said I needed what? Uh, 4.5 centimeters so there you go so i could have that one for 40 dollars so uh that could be a thing uh i'm gonna add it to the i'm gonna add it to the cart and see if there's something else anywhere another one for 10 more dollars that I can have and there's actually picture of an LS engine. <laughs> so that one, it's for $10 uh, more, but it will be here this week and uh, I could, it's having like LS picture on it. So, hmm. All right, I guess I'm gonna buy it. I don't even know, I'm, I need to look like, what do I need to measure, what, I, I don't get what is going to change uh, with that, like, it makes no sense, because basically you are, what, s just pinning that thing if you have enough valve allow the, allowing the spring to get in play, so I just don't get it, to be fair. And that's maybe because I'm not taking enough, uh, I'm not reading enough things, but let's see. Because I don't get what you are measuring actually, like making sure it sits to its place. Okay, no, if your machine shop has already assembled your cylinder head or if uh, you you are using a set of pre-assembled aftermarket heads, skip ahead to step 29, we're not. Your valve stem uh, seals and spring seats must be installed uh, during the next few steps uh, referred to step two of cylinder head uh, assembly in chapter eight for how to do this insert an intake valve into the cylinder head set your valve spring uh, gauge high gauge onto uh, the valve spring uh, seat okay after installing a valve spring retainer lock uh, return a look, twist the height, the head gauge until the valve is uh, held fully closed. Note the reading on the gauge. Valve spring manufacturers normally quote the proper install height uh, for the, uh, their spring. Stock replacement spring should use GM uh, specification for install height. If the height gauge uh, shows less than the required installed height, uh, value or is substantially greater you will need a different set of spring if the height gauge reading is greater than this value but still in the ballpark you can uh, purchase and then add shims oh it's to see if you need shim in there uh, 
okay it's really to just make sure it's closing properly so since those springs are supposed to be a daring a direct fit into uh the the actual heads of an ls engine it should be checking out there but we still need to verify that just to make sure all right now i have an explanation now i feel okay with buying a 40 dollars things uh i'm gonna buy the one with ten dollar more because uh, it's also not saying just one left and stuck on that other one compared to the one i had in front of me there that's a chill lo-fi right now uh, where is it wait what all right that one for monday but where's the other one that was okay for p8 again pump 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 that 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 one that one with ls pictures in it only 10 in stock all right i'm buying it i'm buying it Boop. there you go and send it there you go so with that done that means we're gonna be able to make sure our cylinder head is gonna be uh, in good position there so that's perfect all right i was saying in two weeks almost the engine done looking at this three weeks let's say three weeks now so there you go that's okay that's okay and then it's gonna be piston ring that's gonna be a big thing but yeah we have a uh, plenty to do before that so tomorrow cleaning the entire uh crankshaft and starting to take measurement in there is gonna be important like i said i'm gonna order uh some uh uh, better quality uh bottom mouth even though like honestly uh i'm saying okay i'm going to upgrade the main bolts for the main cap uh it's a good idea it's never a bad idea to upgrade to performance part but i know that the bottom half of those engines can held up to easily 600 hp aiming for 600 at the wheel that means more a 700 uh, hp build so we're going to upgrade those just to have a like a just feel like we are in a safer position basically but yeah so that should be good and then we're getting to final assembly so many geeky things in there front cam oh there you go so what does that mean that means this afternoon except like doing a bunch of reading and stuff we have pretty much done nothing we do blow some hair some air into the engine pretty much that's it uh but hey there's a uh, that uh, it's still a thing to do right so basically uh from what i've seen so far uh, i'm gonna go uh, and grab also some uh paper towel for tomorrow uh with the mineral uh, spirits we're gonna be basically cleaning up uh, most of the surface here tomorrow for sure we're going to be able to start uh, uh, measuring the crankshaft and everything one thing i was not expecting but is actually uh, the case is that we're going to pretty much uh, put a lot of parts together and leave them in place until we are done measuring everything then we're going to disassemble everything again and clean up absolutely everything until uh starting the final assembly so it's actually going to start to look like an engine until we remove everything so it's not looking like an engine anymore so that we can go ahead and uh pretty much set everything up and then assemble everything for one final run so honestly we are uh, tuesday today uh two days left uh this week maybe three if i'm working uh, on that on friday because i want some stuff to progress uh it's gonna depend on where we're at but uh yeah i think the pre-assembly is gonna be a big part of next week too and after that we're gonna get close to the to the uh, final assembly so uh yeah yeah 
engine work starting. Like you see, you need to take care of uh, what you do. You need to make sure you read properly everything. I'm gonna bring the book with me inside just to know uh, what else and uh, keep going through because uh, I've s read in a diagonal some parts. So I'm gonna read it thoroughly, uh, the pre-assembly uh, process, just to know if I'm missing anything else. But other than that, honestly, it's looking really, really good so far. Uh, I feel more and more confident about doing that. I feel like there's no big, uh, like, uh, magical things to do there. It's just take your time, put everything in place, and work it out. So that's the idea here. So we're gonna be doing that. Uh, like I said, tonight I'm gonna soak them uh, into uh, the mineral spirit just to make sure we are removing a bunch of uh, the grease in there. I'm gonna see if I have actually, yes I do. So I'm gonna grab a bag like this and pro, oh, they are bigger than I expect, I guess, surely. So I'm gonna make sure I'm using uh, maybe a bit of WD-40 just before that, uh, before going out in town to buy the mineral spirits and uh, just go ahead and spray them. So it's gonna help dissolve a part of the uh, schmutz on it. And then after that, we're gonna move on and uh, probably uh, clean that up tomorrow morning and start assembling the crankshaft in there. So. Until there, guys, I'm gonna go. I have, uh, like I said, the general assembly for the racing team, well, the racing club uh, tonight. So we're gonna decide who's gonna be our new president and who's gonna be uh, in charge for the next season. So I love you all, guys. Thank you for being here. Micah, Rack, you legend. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys. And uh, see you tomorrow for more engine uh, action. So bye.